Buckler and I am one of the founders of House A Go Go. I thought I'd create this channel as a way for you guys to get to know me a little bit better and also so that you can follow us through our journey really, see us from start to finish, what we're doing, get a sneak peek into some of the upcoming properties as there are quite a few. Um, and just get a behind the scenes look at what is actually going on. Uh, you might find it interesting, you might not. I've not done this before, so please bear with me. I'm not all that good on the camera, so it's probably gonna be a couple of you know runs before this gets actually right or I get comfortable in front of the camera. But yeah, I mean, please, I want this to be kind of, what's the word that I'm looking for? I want this to be interactive, so any questions that you have about House of Go Go, about me, about the properties, about what's our next plan, anything that you want to see on these videos, please, please, please do let me know. Um, write me a comment at the bottom of the screen. If you do like it, subscribe, give us a thumbs up so I know that you know I should keep doing this and this is actually what people want to see. Um, but yeah, I'm really open to your feedback basically. I suppose the first question I should answer is what is House of Go Go? Now, House of Go Go is a competition website whereby you buy a ticket, you enter a question, provided you get that question right, you then enter into a draw um, to win a property. Yeah. So the Odds are always going to be kept quite low. I think it's really important for that to happen. Um, you're always going to have a 1 in 350,000 chance or less. The current property that we have um, just launched today is a studio flat in Nunhead, which is in between East Dulwich and uh, Peckham, so quite trendy South East London areas. So yeah, it's, it's a really cool little flat. and. The odds of you winning that are 1 in 200,000. So for the first one we wanted to keep them really low. Obviously when they're different price brackets because some of the properties that we have coming up um, are going up towards £2 million. But this is quite a lower bracket so anything around the 250 to 350 mark will probably always have odds of around 200,000 or less. We, the, the main thing that I really wanted to do and I feel very strongly about this is to keep the odds low firstly so that you have a better chance of winning secondly so that it's kept fun no one likes a really long drawn out competition I certainly don't um, and thirdly is there a third no we just want it to be quick basically, we want to be a, I, I personally would love to see this being something where instead of playing the lottery you play House of Go Go each week, that we have a new competition launching every week and it's got massively good odds, so much better than any other kind of competition or lottery or raffle or whatever you want to do out there. So, you know, I know that people play the lottery on a weekly basis and the odds of winning the jackpot are something absolutely ridiculous, like a 1 in 13 point something million chance. You know, and there's only one jackpot and the next best prizes are like around 100,000. You have got a much better chance of winning this. Significantly better. Um, and I kind of, I feel like the fun has been taken out of property this year, especially because of, well, in the last couple of years because of all the rubbish that's been going on i want to make property fun again i have i have such i have such a passion for property myself and you know if we can do something to make the whole process somewhat fun and easier i am all game for that let me tell you so that's how to go go um how i came up with the idea Four House A Go Go really, you know, comes down to the fact that we had a property, this studio flat, that we were struggling to sell. Now, the background behind that is really, I suppose, giving you a little bit more background about me, myself. 
So I've been in property for coming up to 10 years now in some shape or form, whether it was lettings, whether it was sales, whether it's property development, you name it, um, I've done it and I'm doing it. And my nan unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago and when she did, she left a small chunk of money to my mum. Now, being in the property profession, I know that property is, or normally, slash before, was a great investment. Um, and I told her that that's where we need to put that money, we need to make sure that it's doing something, it's not just sitting there, because if it's just sitting there, it's doing absolutely nothing. And my mum's on her own, so I thought this would be a good, like, sideline income to, you know, help her, really. And seeing as I am in the property industry, there seems to be, a, there's meant to be a lot less risk involved, because I know how to value properties, I've been trained how to value properties, so I know if I see something, what it's worth or what it would be worth if it was done up. So the idea was that we would go to auctions and buy properties that needed some renovation and refurbishment and then sell them for a profit. We did it once, um, the first time we did it, it worked great, um, we bought a flat, sold it within six months for a profit and then the idea was to keep going. And then we came to this property, um, the studio flat in Nunhead, which when we first bought it, it was actually a shop that we were going to convert. We've got, guys, we've got the current, we've got the planning permission, don't worry. Um, but we were going to convert it into a flat and it would take two to three months max to do the renovations. We had all the plans drawn up. We had our builder that we found and um, things were looking good. The market was good. I knew exactly what it would kind of go for when it was done up. So we were rocking and rolling. But unfortunately, um, the builder that we had found, um, he, well, yeah, naively, as we hadn't done this kind of thing before, he asked for the money up front and we gave it to him. And it was a serious chunk of money that obviously we're converting a shop into a flat here. It's not just some put a bathroom in type thing. It was quite a lot of money. And for the first two weeks, he came on site with his builders, his builders, and uh, they knocked a few things down. Then that was it. Gone. Gone with our money. And cannot tell you how awful it was because, you know, I couldn't help but blame myself. I've told my mum to do this. I've, I've effectively given our money to someone and trusted him and he's gone off with it. He, you know, there isn't really anything that anyone can do. Like we looked into it, we spoke to people and he went bankrupt apparently. So all the money that we gave him vanished apparently paying other people's debts that he had. Uh, like, you know, I think it's just a con man situation. It happens and there wasn't anything we could do about it. But it meant, you know, we've got this property and we haven't got the money to do it up. So what are we gonna do? Um, took quite a few months before we had the funds to be able to start the renovations again. Um, kind of scrimping everything that we had to together to get it done. And then we found another builder, and obviously I was very wary and cautious at this point, so I was making sure that I was only paying him on a basis of, you know, you do this, you get paid, that's it. So he was doing stuff, but he was, and he was good, um, but very slow. And by this point, I think we we're like a, a year, a year and something into the, the work, into the project, and obviously, you know, all of our money is tied up. We've had to put more money into it that we hadn't even thought that we would need to do because obviously the first one ran off with it and we're starting to get stressed. So I think, I'm, yeah, I think it's about a year and a half into it at this point. It's, it's just gone on for so long. I don't even know where or at what point things happen, to be honest. Um, so we had a chat with him and he just, he would stretched himself too much. He just didn't have the capability or the men to be able to get the job done in enough time. And he was saying that it would be a couple more months, which, you know, it should be a two month job already. And he's already been there for a couple. So we just had to part ways. 
third and final build up, third time lucky, and um, he's he's actually been great. And moving forwards, we've got our builder, we know what we're doing, all good. Um, but yeah, he got the he got the job done in about I think it took him two months, just over two months to do it, and it looks really really good. We're really happy with it. Um, it you know it it's. It's a small flat, it's not the hugest flat, but it is such a nice space, it really is. It's quirky industrial with exposed brick walls, hardwood flooring, um, we put an exposed, exposed, I keep saying that, we put um, old pipe work around the corner for like a clothes rail, and it's got brass and copper shower fixtures and fittings, as well as the hanging Edison light bulbs. So it's a really cool, funky flat. I mean, obviously, go on, you, you know, if you're here, you would have seen the flat because the photos are all online because it is obviously the first property that we are launching. But I love it. Great investment. South East London is so affordable still and um, can only go out in one direction, really, considering the rest of London. And it's, you know, it's a great little flat. It really is. So anyway, I digress. Um, we finished the renovations finally, got it valued, got it valued by five different estate agents because even though I'm in the market um, and obviously I know how to value properties myself, when it is your own, you don't want to be biased. So I always make sure that I get other people in just to, just to make sure that I'm on the right track. So we have five different agents in and they all said between 285 to 335 with, you know, only one saying the lower figure and I kind of, I had in my mind kind of around the 290 mark so um, we put it on for 300 just to see what happened and it should have sold pretty quickly but unfortunately whilst we had all these problems with the builders and trying to get the money together to do it again and everything uh, the market had changed quite drastically so we now found ourselves um, with increased stamp duty and Brexit, the wonderful Brexit. And it meant that although people were looking at the flat, no one, were making any, no one was making an offer, um, the market was very, very quiet and had completely changed. So we were stuck. We reduced the property from 300 to 285 um, and then even reduced it to 275 and it's not because of the property, it really isn't, it's more just because of the way the market has been. People don't want to, people have been too scared to kind of do anything about it in case the market drops, which, believe you me, I don't think is going to happen at all. In fact, I think it's going to do the opposite. I think once we've got this Brexit rubbish out of the way and the market has got rid of the uncertainty, it will just start to kind of come back up again. Yes, it won't go to the crazy open days that it used to be where you'd have like one property and 90 people in an hour, which is absolutely ridiculous, but you know, things will all move and people will move on and we'll soon look back on Brexit and be what what Brexit. Um, but yeah, it's only gonna go up anyway. So we were, in this situation where I've got my mum's money in this property, I've told her to do this, it's all on me, I feel absolutely awful, what are we going to do? We can't sell the property because no one is buying at the moment and realistically we can't afford to rent it because my mum needs that money, she can't, you know, that's what she lives on so therefore it's been two years now with absolutely nothing, we need to get that, well two and a half years now, we need to get that equity out of the, the flat. So. I looked at uh, remortgaging it, I say remortgaging it, but you didn't have a mortgage in the first place, but you know what I mean. And unfortunately, because of my mum's age, um, she can't get a mortgage, uh, so that was a no-go. And I ended up sitting here just really... I didn't know what to do, I genuinely didn't know what to do, and I was sitting here and I think it was in January or February of last year. And you know when you just have, well, I say you know, I've never had one of these before. I've always looked on Dragon's Den and think, thought to myself, like, that is amazing that people can do that and come up with these ideas. I would love to, you know, be one of those people that come up with these amazing ideas, but that was never, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to come up with an idea the where I'm never going to invent, let's say, the toaster 
that brings toast to the to you in bed or just stupid things like that. It's not about me. Not not for me. But anyway, I had my first ever and only ever Eureka moment. I was sat there and it just came to me. You know, I see all of the problems every single day that people have with property from a buyer's point of view, from a seller's perspective, where you've got all these issues throughout the sale process, whether it's before you actually put the house on the market before you buy or all the way through to the end. It's always stressful. It always ends up becoming like a pressure cooker moment where someone's about to pull out or they're threatening this or that. It's never ever easy. I've probably had in my lifetime two or three sales that have actually been quite easy. That's it out of God knows how many. But yeah, it's never, never, ever, ever easy. So I was sitting here and I thought, why can't we make this fun? Now, I come from, I say, well, I don't really come from like a gambling background, but I've got, you know, my dad and my brother are both professional gamblers. So I've kind of grown up with this idea of how things work in terms of odds and you know, I like to go and have a little flutter at the races or I go to the casino sometimes and I'll always play blackjack. I would love to play poker, but I don't have the patience or the stamina to carry on for ages. And I'm not one of those people that when I do go to the races, I bet on the colour of the jockey or the jockey's name. I bet on form. Sometimes actually I do bet on the jockey's name because I know the jockey has been quite good before. But yeah, anyway, you know what I mean. So... I thought, what about if there was a way in which we could win a house? Someone could win this flat, pay a nominal amount and win it. Now, when I first came up with the idea, I called up my dad, obviously, and I called up my mum and they were like, all gun ho for it, fantastic. I also have a law degree and originally once once upon a time I thought I was going to be a barrister but anyway this I have a law degree and this is important because obviously when I first came up with this idea I thought yeah great spoke to everyone and then thought hang on a second it can't be that easy because you know otherwise other people would have done it before so I looked into it and it can't it's really important that this isn't a lottery or a raffle. So there has to be an element of skill that has to be passed before you can enter the competition to win. And it, it definitely has been quite challenging to find a way in which we can get this element of skill to work. So I've worked closely with Harris Hagen, who are the top solicitors, well, top gambling solicitors and they've been absolutely fantastic but we finally got to a scenario whereby we were both happy that it was compliant with the gambling commission and that it is a prize competition site so as i mentioned earlier the idea is that you buy a ticket the one that we have is the two pounds plus 15p booking fee and you answer a question now the question that we will be using is going to be the same throughout the competitions just for a different house so what it will be is that we'll have a picture of a house and you have to guess the age of the house so a bit like spot the ball except um you'll have a multiple choice of so there'll be multiple choice questions so there'll, there'll be three answers that you can choose from so it helps you out a little bit but um the main thing is that you can't google the answer so for example, the first one, beautiful house, great picture of a house, you just got to guess the age. One of three chances. And provided you get it right, then you get entered into the competition. So the odds are one in 200,000 for the first one, but obviously that could be less if some people get it wrong. But there will be 200,000 tickets sold and only 200,000 tickets sold. We're not telling you 200,000 tickets and actually, you know, we get to 200,000 and we'll keep the competition going because we want to make money. Not about that. There is a, underneath the property 
itself on the actual competition page there will be a countdown timer so you will be able to see how many tickets are left at any given time so you know that you know once one ticket's gone or 10 tickets or 50 tickets have gone that will be updated automatically through the system on the um, computer so yeah um, easy right um, I thought this way you know, it gets all of the rubbish out of the way for the buyer. It helps the first time buyer get onto the property ladder first of all, because you know, you could effectively win it for two pounds, 15 pence. And I know how difficult it is to save up for a deposit and pay your rent and do all of this stuff with life nowadays and then pay stamp duty. It's tough. So it gives the buyer a chance to get onto the property ladder in a fun and easy way. It also obviously prevents people from coming in and gazumping you. That's when you know you put an offer in, you think you're going ahead, and then someone comes in at a later date and offers higher. The, the owner goes with them. It also helps the investor because obviously it's a lot more difficult now with these 3% additional stamp duty taxes. And it, to some extent, a lot of investors now can't afford to add to their portfolio anymore because it's so expensive. So it helps you, you get a property for free. And for the owner, it helps you as well, as obviously an owner here, it helps, it is going to help us. It will be a case of, you know, the competition is going to run for four months, so you'll have four months whereby, you know, you've got no problems in terms of, oh, how long is my property going to, how long is it going to sit on the market for, how long will it take to sell? No, you know exactly what price you'll get, so we say it's 300,000 or whatever it is, you'll get 300,000. There's no, you know, problems with people pulling out of transactions. There's no problems with, you know, you getting to the very end of nearing exchange and someone tries to chip at the price. None of that. It's just so easy. And that is what I want. I want it to be easy. Now, obviously, a reason why people can't afford to buy a property is stamp duty. So, Sorted. We're covering your stamp duty. We are paying for the first time buyer stamp duty or an investor. So we'll pay the additional 3% for you. So it's completely free for you to win this property. We'll also pay for legal fees um, on both sides of the transaction. And we will also pay for the winner's council tax and buildings insurance for up to six months after the win. So this then means that there's no, you know, the property doesn't instantly become a liability for you. It gives you the freedom to choose what you want to do with it. Whether that's a case of you want to rent it out, whether you want to sell it, whether, you know, you want to live in it. You have that flexibility and time to, to make those choices. So it should be a win-win for everyone. Um... Not only that, with the um, proceeds from what we make at House of Go Go, 10% of those will go to a mental health charity. Now, my partner, Chris, he has worked at um, the Birmingham Homeless, I say worked at, it's not work, he's volunteered at the Birmingham Homeless Christmas Shelter every year for the past, I don't know, four or five years, I think. Um, and he, is a real strong believer that um, part of the root cause of homelessness is mental health issues. So he was very strongly um, of the opinion that the proceeds, I first of all was going to say let's put 10% of proceeds to a homeless charity, but he said no, nope, let's do mental health. And you know, I completely agree with him. So 10% of proceeds will be going towards a mental health charity. Um, and another 10% of proceeds will go to a council project um, in the area where the particular property at that moment in time that's being uh, won is based. So for example, I mean, we'll look into this nearer the time, we don't know what exact project, but probably something like a renovation of a park or, you know, we'll just put some money towards the 10% of the proceeds towards helping um, a council on a particular project. But obviously, you subscribe to this channel, you can see all of that and you'll be able to follow us through and see exactly what we do decide to do with it. Um, so, it really is just... I couldn't be more a fan of this whole concept. It makes what has been a really difficult and challenging couple of years for the property market, it makes it fun again. It makes it easy and it removes all of the stress and headaches from both parties. 
you know, it couldn't be easier. And who doesn't want to win a house? I mean, come on. I, I'd love to win a house. Um, so yeah, now on that, that's just kind of jogged my memory on something else. What's really important as well about this is um, the winner will be chosen by a random generator. So there's no way that we can, you know, doctor who wins or anything like that. We will also film it live. So you'll be able to see it and follow us through with the winner and hopefully, you know, dependent on who the winner is, we might even film them coming to the property and do like a little housewarming for them. There's so many ideas I've got. I am literally so excited about this. And um, yeah, it will be completely chosen at random from the list of the entrants that obviously got the answer correct. I would love to end up seeing this being something that was played every week as opposed to, you know, other platforms out there. You know, you everyone let's go buy a, 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 the weekly ticket, a house to go go, and then there'll be a weekly draw for a different house. <coughs> Sorry, got a frog in my throat now, getting so excited. So yeah, that is um, House of Go Go in a nutshell. House of Go Go is now live. You can enter the competition. Click on the link below, and you know the quicker that you guys buy the tickets and support us with this, the quicker we can get on to the next one. As I said, we've got seven already and waiting to go live, and they are some absolute corkers, believe you me. Um, the next film that I will probably video will be a sneak peek preview tour of the next one, which will be launching hopefully very soon. And that one is a four bedroom uh, terrace house in South East London as well worth £800,000, so it's going to be a good one. So yeah, um, guys, give me a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe so you can follow us through the little updates that we're going to have and obviously the sneak peek tours and previews. Put your questions and comments below so that I can get back to you and obviously if you want to see anything or any questions, just please let me know um, and we can do something about it. <laughs>